Um, Mr. Anderson, AA infrastructure is, is uh, not currently treated or identified as critical infrastructure for cybersecurity purposes. Um, should we rethink whether AI is actually critical infrastructure? And if so, what would that mean for, uh, from a cybersecurity standpoint? Thank you for your question. Uh, the, the short answer is, is yes. Uh, the longer answer is we have lots of technologies that when we previously considered critical infrastructure designation, things like cloud computing and uh, artificial intelligence companies, that were previously not considered to be critical infrastructure. Doing so today would give us an opportunity to examine minimum cybersecurity requirements, would bring them into the fold for larger strategic planning and lash them up with communities like uh, DHS CISA, the cybersecurity and information, uh, and, excuse me, the cybersecurity and uh, infrastructure security agency uh, to be able to engage in information sharing operations. Uh, these types of things I think would help to uh, underpin greater security in these critical infrastructure industries. Very good, thank you. Mr. Moore, stakeholders have raised concerns about difficulties in protecting trade secrets during litigation. Uh, what is the standard process for protecting trade secrets in court cases specifically? Well, typically what happens is that there is a protective order. And uh, the, <clears throat> in other words, when the, uh, when the, de the defense the accused party has, has a right to defend themselves and they have a right to know, okay, what are they being accused of stealing? And so if it is a trade secret and it leaks out, for example, on a court docket, then the secrecy is gone and it's no longer valuable. So the, what the judge will do is balance uh, a number of factors and typically write an order that restricts access to the trade secret and makes, <clears throat> um, makes sure that uh, the the information doesn't leak out into the public domain. Right, so if the risk of trade secret leakage increases as the use of third party litigation funding continues, especially like a patent case or other technology, um, what would be kind of the scope of the requirements in and around that? How, well, how do you the, protect yourself? Well, the, the scope is, is, really, <clears throat> is really left to the discretion of the trial judge, but from our point of view, the more information the <clears throat> the more information the trial judge has, the better an order that the judge is going to be able to write. So, for example, suppose you knew that one of the parties, <clears throat> let's take this, it's a third-party litigation-funded lawsuit. It, it is a, um, a party that is funded by the Chinese government. Uh, and <clears throat> if you have, if you're the judge and you're crafting a protective order in that, case, you would write a pretty, you probably write a much more severe one than if you thought it was just a, a, a couple of local dry cleaners fighting over a formula. It might, that, that protective order might look very, very different. You might have, for example, personal liability for the attorneys, uh, which has a way of focusing the mind uh, if, any of the, if any of the information were to leak out. And there's a number of things that the judge can put protocols into how in terms of how the information is used, how it's stored, under what circumstances, and who can see it, and how that access is logged, among other things. Very good, thank you. Dr. Uh, Villasenar, why is trade secret protection important to AI development compared to just any other type of IP protection? Uh, I guess, specifically, like many of us have heard testimony this morning, between the US and China as well. Why, why is that? Why is it important? Well, well, trade secrets are important across the spectrum of, of industries, but they are absolutely critical to AI because uh, even in the case of, you might have heard these systems that are described as open systems, these open uh, AI systems, they are still enormous amounts of trade secrets that go into that. In other words, if somebody releases the model weights, for example, as open, they wouldn't necessarily release how they train those model weights and what the training data was used. And so, and, and they're not gonna often release the source code. And so there's an enormous amount of, of trade secrets in AI, just like there is in other areas as well. But with AI, it's particularly complex just because the sheer size and magnitude of these systems is so large that there's just more opportunity to build, you know, an incredible amount of trade secrets. So I think that's, without trade secrets, we do not have the ability to maintain our AI leadership. That's, that's, that's what the investment is going into, and that's what the companies are being valued for. And I'm guessing because China is so secretive, in that the way, the way they view this, 
then it makes it even more difficult when it, when it comes to specifically seeing exactly what they're up to. Is that correct? Well, I, I think the, the open system that we have here where companies make their own choices about what to reveal and what to keep secret is incredibly powerful. And the, and the, the proof is in the pudding. And we are unquestionably the country with the leading AI ecosystem. And, and I don't think that's an accident. Thank you, Chair. I yield back.